Okay, on the slit. Astronomer Phil Charles thinks he has proof that such intangible objects are to be found in the real universe. The giveaway signal was the sudden burst of unexplained X-rays which alerted Phil to V404, a faint star trapped in orbit around an invisible compact object. We have to wait for that X-ray outburst to die away so that we can see that faint, cool star that's orbiting the compact object. Uh, we need to follow its motion. Now, once the outburst has died away, we can see this. You're talking about very faint stars, uh, the below 17th, many below 20th magnitude. That's more than a million times fainter than the faintest star you could see with the naked eye. And that means you have to come to places like this to use telescopes like that. <laughs> The massive William Herschel telescope concentrates the feeble light from V404 and feeds it into a spectrum analyzer. These are signatures of a star not much different from the sun, and it represents oh, more than 80% of the light here. That we can follow and uh, use the, the speeds that we measured to determine the mass of the object we cannot see. An analogy is that of a big, strong man and a very small, light woman. As they swing each other around, the man hardly moves, and the woman, just by the balance of their weights, moves much more. Calculations show that V404 orbits her heavy, mysterious partner once every six and a half days. To achieve speeds like these, the partner must be very heavy indeed. The mass that we measure by this process is 12 solar masses, 12 times the mass of the sun. That means it is substantially heavier than what we think is the, uh, the largest mass of a neutron star. We are virtually certain it's a black hole. The black hole has embraced V404 in a deadly dance, ripping gas from the hapless star and feeding it into a great disk of cannibalized matter. As this material spirals towards the hole, it heats up and sends a last desperate X-ray signal to the outside world. Nearly a dozen similar objects have now had their presence betrayed to astronomers in this same way by X-ray signals. One of the first was Cygnus X-1. I had a bet with Stephen Hawking as to whether Cygnus X-1, a particular object from which one saw X-rays coming off, uh, was a black hole. Stephen Hawking bet that it wasn't. That was not because I didn't believe in black holes. Rather, it was because I wanted an insurance policy. I had done a lot of work on black holes, and it would all have been wasted if it had turned out that black holes didn't exist. But at least I would have had the consolation of winning the bet. When Hawking and Thorne made the bet in 1974, the evidence was thin. But as the years rolled on and the evidence mounted, Hawking felt it was safe to concede the wager. And in 1990, Stephen Hawking happened to be visiting Los Angeles. He broke into my office and uh, thumbprinted off uh, on this bet. This handwritten bet has come to symbolize the first real acknowledgement by the scientific establishment that black holes are really out there. But for every black hole clutching a star in deadly embrace, there must be many more solitary ones yet unseen. I'd love to get close to a black hole. I'd love to see the distorted images of stars and galaxies as light from them bends around the black hole, the rings of light around the black hole, contemplate what was going on down inside the black hole. Uh, it would just be wonderful. Thank you.